Hi folks, happy Tuesday. I was gonna film yesterday, but there was loud building work going on outside my house. And to be fair, they're still loading up skips, but I don't think that you can hear it, so that's fine. I was also trying to work out if you can see uh, my clothes drying on the radiator, and maybe you can, but let's pretend that you can't. Hello, um, I am here today with my computer here with a big list. Uh, to talk to you about some of my most anticipated books for 2022 because it is that time of year it is november and not all of the books that i'm going to be excited about have been announced yet but some of them have so i have a list of about 25 here to talk to you about and i'm sure i'm going to be doing more most anticipated book videos in the future I'm always asked, so I'm just anticipating this question, how do I find out about new releases? Because of my job as a book reviewer, I am emailed by publishers with AI sheets or press releases about new books, but I also go on a deep dive into the internet to try and find out new releases. So I will research my favorite authors, see what new books they've got coming out. Also, if you go to publishers' websites, scroll all the way down to the bottom, Normally, though not always, there is a link you can click that says catalogues and then there'll be catalogues for the next six months of book releases and you can look through all the blurbs and see what is coming out. So I have some in proof form here. I've got four of them in proof form. Some of them are arcs that are on their way to me. Some of them are pre-orders that I have. Some of them don't have many details because they're coming out late in the year so don't have book covers but wherever there are book covers i will insert them on the screen as i go i have not organized this it's just a list we're going in any order but let's begin with the books that i have physical copies of so the first one is bitter by akweke emeze and this is coming out on the 15th of february and this is a follow-up to pet which was their um, middle grade young way book that i really really loved full of magical realism. The quote on the back says, Bitter had no interest in the revolution. She was 17 and she thought it was ridiculous that adults wanted young people to be the ones saving the world as if her generation was the one that had broken everything in the first place. So it's, I don't think it's a direct sequel, but it's a companion novel. So it's set in the same world where monsters and angels kind of exist, kind of exist, do exist. It's really cool. If you haven't read Pet, I would really, really recommend it. So that's coming out in February. Then we have a new novel by Julia Armfield coming out in March. It's got a quote from Sarah Waters on the front, which is pretty cool. It says, Our Wives Under the Sea. And what does Sarah Waters say? She says, A wonderful novel, deeply romantic and fabulously strange. I've really enjoyed Julia's short stories that I've read before, queer, magical realism. The blurb is on the inside. It says, Miri thinks she has got her wife back when Leah finally returns after a deep sea mission that ended in catastrophe. It soon becomes clear though that Leah may have come back wrong. Whatever happened in that vessel, whatever it was they were supposed to be studying before they were stranded on the ocean floor, Leah has carried out part of it with her. Leah has carried part of it out with her onto dry land and into their home. Mr. M and I also just finished watching Vigil on BBC iPlayer. Spoiler, that will be in my awesome favorites video. And even though they're completely different genres, I'm getting similar vibes, queer love story. Vigil is about two female detectives, one of whom is sent to try and solve a murder on a nuclear submarine. Things happening under the sea, not all is quite what it seems, very tense, anti-Trident, loved it. Um, yeah, very different, but that is immediately where my mind went to. This is a proof I'm super excited about. This is coming out in January. Where is Mrs. Christie? Murder mystery novelist disappears. Editing Jen here, just interjecting to say I realise I didn't say the title of this book. This is The Christie Affair by Nina de Gramont, and I've put the cover, the finished cover, on the screen here so you can see it in all of its glory. So Agatha Christie did disappear, I think for 10, oh sorry, 11 days. It says in 1926, Agatha Christie disappeared for 11 days. Aside from the famous author herself, only I know the truth of her disappearance. I am no Hercule Poirot. I am her husband's mistress. So this is based on real life stuff. Um, I think this sounds fantastic. And then the last one I have in physical form before we move on to my computer list is this new novel by Louise O'Neill, which is coming out in when are you coming out may 2022 this is an adult novel and it's about a famous novelist but i think she has a huge online presence and basically she's telling people how to have a happy life and how to live 
the best way you possibly can. And it says, as her career is booming, she just hit three million followers online. Her new book, Chased, has gone straight to the top of the bestseller charts. She's appearing at sellout events, determined to speak her truth and bear all to her adoring fans. She's written an essay about her sexual awakening as a teenager with her female best friend, Lisa. She's never told a soul, but now she's telling the world and the essay goes viral. But then Lisa reappears and says, that's not how I remember it, Samantha. And then it goes on from there. I know that Kieran is reading this at the moment and that she's really, really, really enjoying it um, and can't put it down. So I'm very excited to read that one. Okay, on to the books on my list. Pals, I have opened up the list and I made a note for myself to mention something at the beginning of the video and I forgot, so we're just gonna do it now. So today, as I'm filming this, Tuesday, the 23rd of November, the Sister Who Ate Her Brothers is published in America and Canada. So I would love it if you could go out to a bookshop or call up your local bookshop, find it online at your local library, whatever. That would be amazing. I've talked about this book before, but if you missed my announcement video, I'll link it in the description box down below. I'm very glad it has reached your shores. Also, it is now out in ebook if you would prefer to buy it in ebook format as well. I'm also doing two events this week, obviously both online. One for the English Bookshop in Stockholm, and that is going to be on Wednesday, the 24th of November, 7 p.m. local time in Sweden, which is 6 p.m. BST here. Again, I'll leave details down below. And then on Thursday, I'm doing an event for Western writers, which is primarily on how to get published. That's also online. I'll also link that in the description box down below too. Okay, all right, let me crack on. So top of my list, we have The Raptures by Jan Carson, which is coming out in January. I love her short stories. Her last book, The Last Resort, was fantastic. This is a novel and it's about an illness that sweeps a school, a whole community, perhaps the world, I don't know. Um, I, I'm guessing it's taken the inspiration from recent times that we have been through, are still going through, um, but it's about a girl called Hannah who doesn't get sick. Um, but everybody else is getting sick and then people are very suspicious about why she is not. Then we've got Year of the Tiger, which I don't know anything about apart from this is a memoir written by Alice Wong who edited Disability Visibility, which is a brilliant book if you haven't read it. I just know it's coming out next year. Don't have a blurb, don't have a cover. Very excited for that. We have Gods of Want by Kei Ming Chang, who's the author of Beastery, which I still need to read. Um, it's on my shelf, I'm excited to get to it. It's coming out on the 18th of August next year. It says the stories include a mother making it her mission to get her daughter-in-law into trouble in her son's eyes, a girl falls in love with her co-worker at a Las Vegas, Las Vegas sushi restaurant, a daughter is sent to live with her aunts on an island haunted by soldier ghosts, exploding whales and stray dogs. And in Resident Aliens, a girl describes a series of widows to have rented out her family's windowless basement, such as the one who taught her how to tie knots and get out of them, or the one she was in love with who left to become a nun. I'm sold. Kit Duvall, who is the author of My Name is Leon, has a memoir coming out also on the 18th of August, and it's called Without Warning and Only Sometimes Scenes from an Unpredictable Childhood. Kit grew up in a household of opposites and extremes. Her haphazard mother rarely cooked, forbade Christmas and birthdays, worked as a cleaner, nurse and childminder, sometimes all at once, and believed the world would end in 1975. Meanwhile, her father stuffed barrels full of goodies for his relatives in the Caribbean, cooked elaborate meals on a whim, and splurged money they didn't have on cars, suits, and shoes fit for a prince. Both of her parents were waiting for paradise. It never came. Catherine M. Valenti has a new series of middle grade books starting in April next year. I really love the beginning books in the Fairyland series. Not the end ones so much, I just feel like they lost a bit of steam, but I like her writing style, so I'm excited to check this one out, which is called Osmo Unknown and the Eight Penny Woods. It's coming out on the 26th of April. Osmo Unknown hungers for the world beyond his small town. With the life that Little Bridge Society has planned for him, the only taste he will ever get are his visits to the edge of Four Penny Woods where his mother hunts. Until one day, the unthinkable happens. His mother accidentally kills a quidunk, a fearsome and intelligent creature that lives deep in the forest. So there is a pact between the quidunks and Osmo's community. And because Osmo's mother has killed one of them, then she has to give up her firstborn son, which is Osmo, to go and live with the Quidunks and go on some kind of quest. Um, and it says that he must do so along with 
a very rude half badger, half wombat, which gives me rocket from Guardians of the Galaxy vibes. He's called Bonk. And an antisocial pangolin girl called Never. It will take all of Osmo's bravery and cleverness to survive the magic of Eight Penny Woods to save his town and make it out alive. Intrigued, something different. On the 3rd of February, we've got Poems for Seven Year Olds, which is being published by Pam McMillan. It's edited by AF Harold. It's a collection of poems for seven year olds, uh, classic and contemporary. And one of my poems called Welcome to the Bookshop is in that collection. A completely different poetry collection that's coming out in April is Time is a Mother by Ocean Vong. This is his second uh, poetry collection. His first one was called night sky with exit wounds i forgot that for a second and um, i didn't love his novel as much but i absolutely adore his poetry so i'm here for that then on the 7th of may we've got night of the living res by morgan tolte it's published by tin house books the tagline is how do the living come back to life and this sounds fantastic it's set in a native community in maine night of the living res is a riveting debut collection about what it means to be penobscot in the 21st century and what it means to live to survive and persevere after tragedy so in these stories a boy unearths a jar that holds an old curse which sets into motion his family's unraveling a man while trying to swindle some pot from a dealer discovers a friend passed out in the woods his hair frozen in the snow a grandmother with alzheimer's projects the past onto her grandson and two friends inspired by Antiques Roadshow attempt to rob the Tribal Museum for valuable root clubs. So that is that one. Then we've got Lesser Known Monsters of the 21st Century, also published by Tin House. And this is by Kim Fu, who's the author of For Today I Am a Boy, which is a novel I read a few years ago and I did enjoy. In the 12 unforgettable tales, Lesser Known Monsters of the 21st Century, the strange is made familiar and the familiar strange, such that a girl growing wings on her legs feels like an ordinary rite of passage, while a bug infested house becomes an impossible Kafkaesque nightmare each story builds a new world all its own a group of children steal a haunted doll a runaway bride encounters a sea monster a vendor sells toy boxes that seemingly control the passage of time and an insomniac is seduced by the satin man i mean do i don't need to say anymore it just sounds so good we have a new ali smith book which is coming out oh i didn't write that down spring sometime late spring i'm gonna say may that may be incorrect but that is my guess companion piece which is a follow-up to the seasonal quartet so autumn winter spring summer it says a celebration of companionship in all its timeless and contemporary legendary and unpin downable spellbinding and ship ship nope shape shifting forms that's all we have that one line which doesn't tell us very much but I'm gonna read it because it's Ali Smith. I am so intrigued by this book which is coming out on the 22nd of February called Manhunt by Gretchen Falcon Martin. It's a post-apocalyptic book about a group of trans women who are fighting for their lives. So it's set in a world where a plague has transformed all cis men into violent feral monstrosities. So it's an extended metaphor, timely, powerful response to every gender-based apocalypse story that failed to consider the existence of transgender and non-binary people. And it's full of body horror, desire, and a grotesque spectrum of pain. Yes. Then we have a once lost, now found a dystopian book by Kadik. So Kadik was a novelist and had lots of her work published. She was a bookseller at Foils. She was the editor of Animal Farm. She's pretty cool. But this book, they was lost, has never been published before, as far as I'm aware, or at least it has been out of print for a very long time. It is being published next year in February um, with an introduction by Carmen Marie Machado. It says, this is Britain, but not as we know it. They are coming closer. They begin with the dead dog, shadowy footsteps, confiscated books. Soon the National Gallery is purged, eerie towers survey the coast, savage mobs stalk the countryside, destroying artworks and those who resist. They capture dissidents, writers, painters, musicians, even the unmarried and childless in military sweeps, curing these subversives of individual identity. Yeah, it says lost for over 40 years. They is a rediscovered dystopian masterpiece of art under attack. Then something quite different again, we're going for nonfiction this time. We have Lula Ellender's new book, which is coming out on the 7th of April. She was the author of Elizabeth's Lists, which is very hard to say. And I love that book so much. If you want something cozy to curl up with, over the winter period might i recommend this to you this one sounds like it's going to be in a similar vein it's called grounding finding home in a garden 
Lula Ellender's garden in Sussex is an unruly but beloved place. It is also not permanently her own. When just a few weeks after losing her mother, Lula is told that she and her family might have to leave the rented house that they have made their home. Her immediate response is to freeze, to neglect the plants she has spent years cultivating. But before long, she finds herself back in the garden, tidying, planning and planting, putting down roots, even though she may not be there to see the shoots emerge. On the 7th of March, there is a short story collection being published by Carly Holmes called Figurehead. Let me just summarise a couple of the stories for you. Mothers turn into trees when the sun goes down. Russian dolls mourn their missing sisters in rotting houses. Men offer sacrifices to the monsters who embody their inner wildness. And murderous demons protect young girls' virginity. That just sounds like a book for me, doesn't it? Yes, please. There's a book by Polar Aloixarak that's coming out in the spring, and I'm not sure it's one I'm gonna pre-order, but it's one I've got my eye on, and I'm interested to see what kind of reviews it's getting. Then maybe I'll check it out myself. It's called Mona, and it's giving me Sally Rooney vibes. It says, Mona is a Peruvian writer based on a Californian campus. Then she's nominated for the most important literary award in Europe, and she goes to, is it Norway? Um, Sweden. She goes to Sweden with lots of other writers and I think they have tangled love lives and, and they're taking drugs and, and whatever. It just sounds like a very chaotic person in their 20s novel. And sometimes I'm into that and sometimes I'm not into that. So we'll see. A short story collection? Yes, a short story collection that's coming out on the 17th of February by Shula Armstrong is called How to Gut a Fish. And I really like the sound of this one too. It says, on a boat offshore, a fisherman guts a mackerel as he anxiously awaits a midnight rendezvous. Villagers one by one disappear into a sinkhole beneath a yew tree. A nameless girl is taped, bound and put on display in a countryside market. A man returning home following the death of his mother finds something disturbing among her personal effects. A novel by Aisha Malik called The Movement is coming out on the 7th of July and I really enjoyed her novel This Green and Pleasant Land. This one is about a woman called Sarah Yavid and she thinks that everyone should just shut up. There's too much talking going on in the world, too much demanding of people's time, too much communication. She wishes everybody would just be quiet. But then she thinks maybe I should practice what I preach. So she decides to take a vow of silence. And then she sparks this whole movement called the silence movement. And women in particular, I think, are not talking and this sparks outrage and global structures start to shift and then she and her followers have to decide what it means to have a voice and what they're going to do going forward. Sounds interesting. On the 22nd of September we've got a new collection which is edited by Margaret Atwood being published. It's called 14 Days and Unauthorised Gathering. I don't know if this is in conjunction with the New York Times collection of, of covid short stories that came out last year. Um, but this is a collection of authors, Margaret Atwood, Dave Eggers, Celeste Ng, um, and they're all writing about neighbors that live in an apartment block. And I think it's about the 14 first days of lockdown um, in New York. I'm, I'm not really sure how I feel about reading pandemic based things at the moment, but it's one that I have on my radar. Then another chaotic woman in her twenties, Sally Rooney, Atesha Moshveg, type novel that I'm, I may pick up coming out on the 14th of April is Wet Paint by Chloe Ashby, which is about a young woman who is mourning the death of her friend, Grace. Um, the woman is called Eve and she's trying to keep everyone and everything at arm's length. Um, and then soon her precariously maintained life begins to unravel. She loses her job, gets thrown out of her flat and risks pushing away the one decent man who cares about her. Taking up life modeling to pay the bills, she lays her body bare but keeps hidden in the mounting chaos of her head. So this also is reminding me of Eliza Clark's boy parts. Oh, and then we're at the end. <laughs> there was one more, but I realized it's a 2023 release and I'm really sad because I thought it was coming out next year. And that was my fault. It's called Death of a Bookseller by Alice Slater, who I love. She's great. Also, I did a podcast with Alice um, and Bethany Rutter over on their podcast, What Page Pod. If you're interested, I'll link that down below. But this is her debut novel, and it is about Roach, who is a bookseller and a loner who is content to spend her days hoarding true crime proofs, listening to murder podcasts, and sneering at the predictable tastes of her normie customers. That is, until Laura joins the bookshop, everyone loves Laura with her neat outfits, literary tote bags, and beautiful poetry. But Laura has a dark side that only Roach can see. And when Roach uncovers her tragic past, curiosity blooms into obsession. As Roach's boundaries disintegrate, it becomes clear that she will do anything to infiltrate Laura's life, and at any cost. This sounds like it's gonna 
gonna have the darkness that I thought was gonna be in the woman with the purple skirt and, and wasn't there. I'm kind of all about this obsession thing like Notes on a Scandal. Um, and I love Alice's writing, but yeah, it's not coming to us until 2023. So I'm gonna try not get too excited about it in the meantime. So those are all the books I wanted to talk to you about today. As I said, I'm sure I will discover new books coming out or remember new books that I've probably forgotten about for this video soon. And then I will make more most anticipated releases videos in the future. I would love to know what books you are most excited about that are being released next year. I will link the events that I'm doing this week in the description box. If you are in the US or Canada and you haven't yet purchased a copy of The Sister Who Ate Her Brothers, I would love it if you would consider doing so and if you're elsewhere in the world as well. I'm just mentioning US and Canada specifically because that's when it's coming out today. All right, I hope you're all having a good start to the week. I will be back with a new video very soon. Sending lots of love.